Let's do this. One more time for Sarnia. <laughs> you made it on the chat. I've got to show the chair for you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for this. All the tall guys, you know, they're really looking out for our shorties. <laughs> <laughs> Is the average Indian man really 5'5"? Five five? Is that true or is that just is, something is you that, Is that good or bad? I don't know. You're a woman. You tell me. No, I don't, it's, I don't it's know. fine. No, that it's is the fine? truth. Yeah, I, I looked it up where we look up all facts. Google. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, I think women would say that's bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, it can't be that bad. There's a million of them, so they're fucking <laughs> anyway. So I think it's working. A whole billion. I mean, I don't care. My son beat the average. I'm good. You know yeah. what I mean? Thank you for doing this. It's, it's a no, pleasure to have you. Thank you for having yeah, me. This, this is, is so fun. Yeah. One of my favorite things about watching you do your set is especially the joke about uh, your mother-in-law. When you, when you, I love when you say, the, when you specifically say the word cunt on stage. <laughs> I just think that's something about it. That's just lovely. <laughs> this is going to be my legacy in comedy. <laughs> No, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful contradiction. Because, you know, you're so likable and then, like, oh. nice. And then you're like, oh, she just said cunt. All right. It's, <laughs> it's pretty great. So let's, let's start with you. Because yeah. I, how old were you when you started? Comedy? Yeah. Uh, like, 44. That is amazing. Cause, <laughs> yes. I think that's very brave and commendable because i started at 23 and in my mind that's still a little late to start so to start at 44 that is i think you're trying to tell me something no 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 no, no, no. i'm serious okay. i think it's just a great thing to do at this stage in your life to be like i'm gonna try something new well you know how it came about so Not necessarily. I, okay me. can i do, so yeah. i have three kids right the whole three kids thing is real and a few years ago, my youngest went into kindergarten and I was really trying to get back to work. And my kids were like, Mom, I'm, uh, my, our friends think you're funny, you should do comedy. And I was like, are you nuts? Who's going to want to listen to what I have to say? And then they pulled the ultimate mom card on me. They were like, oh, you too scared to start something new? <laughs> That is perfect. 16 years as a parent, I yelled at them, try something new, go do basketball, do ballet. And like, they all ganged up on me and they're like, oh, guess who's there to start something new? <laughs> so literally on a dare, I ended up in the basement of a Mexican restaurant where, where everything starts. <laughs> <laughs> where, where was the first uh, open at, mic slash show? Where did Upper you West it? Side, at West Side Comedy Club. Oh, okay, cool. And because it was a mom comedian running the open mic, I showed up, I said, my kids send me here, I don't know what to do. So what was your process? Did you Google how to write jokes? Did you no, take no, a not class? The day of the open mic, I just showed up because I was like, I just showed my kids that I went. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, this isn't going to go anywhere. So I'll just, I'll be like, I'll take a photo, I'll take right. a selfie. So this is Look, really I'll... a career for your kids. Right, That's exactly. Okay. That's how it started. Not anymore because I get paid now. So like, watch <laughs> it. Okay. Yeah. But I showed up and then I told the lady who was running the mm -hmm. open mic, I said, I, I'm not sure what to do, but my kids sent me <laughs> She said, okay, yeah. go on stage, say whatever you want, five minutes. I said, whatever I want. <laughs> That's, that's a terrible thing for her to say to you. That's not how it She's works. like, whatever you think is funny. I'm like, okay. So I went up on stage and I was like, wow, white people do this? <laughs> like, this is a job in America? <laughs> yeah. It truly is my And mind. then I just trashed my mother-in-law for four and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lot worse than cunt. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, uh, I have a surprise for you. I brought your mother-in-law. She's, yeah. so uh, she's always hovering <laughs> around me now because she thinks I'm getting paid and she's entitled to some of it. I mean, if she's giving you the material, technically the woman, she might have a case. Listen, the woman couldn't speak a word of English until last year. 60 something years, nothing. On my birthday, I would get one balloon emoji. <laughs> Do you know how sad that is when somebody sends you one emoji? It it's is pretty sad. Free. At least three. You know, at right? Least three. Yeah. 
Yeah. Then suddenly this year on my birthday, she's like, happy birthday. So I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and then she goes, I got an agent. She got an agent. Because she thinks I'm going to need her on whatever TV show I create. Right. <laughs> Sounds like a fascinating woman. I, I'm not sure. Fascinating is not necessarily the word. <laughs> not other words. All right, let's backpedal for a little bit. So how did you get to America? Because what I found out was that you came here when you were 16. Yeah. And so your, your father died. My mother died. Your mother died. Yeah, yeah. And your father tried to marry you. Exactly. The next, the day after he died, she was like, you know, you need to get arranged. I'm done parenting. I was the youngest of four. Yeah. So, and, and I like, uh, you know, I have three kids now. If I had a fourth, I might do the same thing. Because <laughs> like, you don't realize what parent, like, how many parents in this room? Like zero, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. They're Australians. Oh, oh, these that they're like, yeah, girl, right? You know, right? How hard is parenting? So my dad was like, you need to, you know, get. Trying to get you married at that age. Yeah, but like in India, it's not so like shocking, you know. Right. Sixteen, right. seventeen for an arranged marriage is a pretty fine age. Okay. Did you, did you, how far along did the process go? Did you meet any? No, no, I didn't. I, did, I was like, I didn't want to. And he said, well, you don't have a choice. You either get arranged or you leave. And he thought he's going to scare me. Right. And I, at, at, you know, when you're 15 and your dad says you can leave, you think you're going to have a pajama party with your friends. <laughs> you're like, okay, I'll leave. Like, I have so many friends. What are they there for? <laughs> So you left and came to America, I guess. No, that's so why I left. And for a year, I had to like find places to live. <laughs> so you were basically a vagrant. I was, a, I was what India. in America they call couch surfing. <laughs> for real? Yeah, for real. Yeah. Really I, but I had a sister who lived here who s offered to take me in. So it took me a year to figure out, and then I came here. Okay, and what year was that? Uh, 92. 92. Yeah. And at that point... Did you, were you very Indian or did you have some American? <laughs> Shut up. You, let me finish the question. Uh, I, I, I mean, this, this is the most American this is going to get. You know what I mean? Like, like how much of American culture did you consume in India? No, I, I, no I knew everything. I was watching all the TV shows because you got bootleg copies of everything. No, yeah. You, yeah. you know, right? Anybody here who had ever seen a bootleg copy of a TV show? So you get fake copies. I knew Three's Company come and knock on my door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what you grew up with Three's yeah. Company? Yeah, and Archie's comics. Yeah. In fact, they, because of the dumb Archie, <laughs> had I never read Archie's comics, I may have just gotten married. <laughs> but I was like, but the books I read, he's dating her, but then she also likes him, and then everybody's kissing, but they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> so why am I getting married? <laughs> That's a good question. Right. <laughs> That's how you corrupt an Indian mind with American <laughs> TV shows. <laughs> but then I came here, and 92 was when Seinfeld and Friends, the TV yeah. shows. You guys watch Seinfeld and Friends? Yeah. yeah? Or is it a little young for you? You've watched it, right? You know what the no, show is about. Right? Pretty old. Ross and Rachel, and they're like dating, and they're not dating. Oh my God. I thought. Friends was the scariest show I ever saw in my life. Why? Because everybody was dating, but not dating and dating. I was like, what hell did I put myself in now? Welcome to America. Yeah, because back home, you met, you got married. It was simple. Here, it was like, felt like the other extreme. Like, no one's ever going to get married. Right, right. So I was very, like super scared. Yeah. Okay, so you get here, you're living with your sister. Yeah. And... What do you, what's, what's your path? What I, you was, try to I was in school. She offered to educate me. She, but I really wanted to go to school. I was one of those nerdy kids who actually liked to be educated. So I went to school. Where did you go? A University of Akron, Akron, Ohio. If anybody here is from Ohio, I see it zero. <laughs> no love, no yeah. love for Akron. None. That's where LeBron is from. LeBron, I know. Yeah. But he's just another kid from Ak what he calls himself, yeah. right? You and LeBron, you guys are the same. Listen, but don't you see it also physically? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to university in Akron. What do you study? Finance, of course. 
So the bankers yeah. know they're like you can't like you can't go too far from the Asian trends. Right. Right. What all right, shut up, studying? bankers. <laughs> you know, they all came in. I'm like, oh, they're in for a trade today. Can I do a quick joke? Because there's a lot of Asians in the crowd. Yeah, can do, I do a, a joke quick... for the Asians. Sure. So can I do all a right, joke? Everybody. Okay, yeah, do right. you guys know, who knows what the acronym STEM stands for in education? STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and math, right? So do you know that there's a whole controversy surrounding this? Because they want to add art to it? Because the artists are feeling excluded. <laughs> You've heard about this? Yep. It's happening. It's a real thing. Because they're like, oh, the artists are excluded. <laughs> what do they think? Like these people, they think they can do anything to us Asians? Like they, do they know if they add art to STEM, there will be no steam? <laughs> they want to make it steam. What do they think? The guy who invented the steam engine ran a puppet show on the side? <laughs> Like, they think they can just upset the Asian world order like this? Like, how would they like it if we add a spelling bee to the NFL? It's a good joke. It's a good joke. By the way, last year's spelling bee champion was a black girl. I know. And that guys. really hurt my feelings. Yeah. Because you know why? Not that, blacks. not that she won, won, but she didn't even really want to win. She played basketball. She's just great. It should, like, just awesome. She was just dribbling as she spelled out the winning word. Yeah. Do you know what that did to our <laughs> self-esteem? <laughs> you can't... What I feel you like do? next year, to beat that, the next Indian kid has to be doing a Bollywood number while spelling <laughs> <laughs> the word. And then we'll be even, you know? <laughs> Have you seen those kids who get on the spelling bee? There is, nerds. There is not yeah. a dro Like, they have not experienced joy in a decade. Yeah, they've been studying for the spelling bee their whole lives. Even when they win, they're like... <laughs> it's like they just escaped death. <laughs> Meanwhile, the little black girl is like, yeah, I'm going to catch the game next. Bye, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> she was super cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, University of Akron, Ohio. Yeah. You study finance. Yeah. And do you get a job in finance? No, because I'm an immigrant, yo. You know how many hassles there are? Immigrant getting a job, the paper. Any H1B people here? No one, right? Yeah, because you can't get a job. They don't. They can't afford the. They they're outside, like hoping they can watch something. But if you find a company that sponsors you, can you can get the O3, you know? Oh, O3 is just falling out of the sky. It's so <laughs> but you guys get them the most. The most O3s are awarded to Indian. Yes. Okay. Let me explain to you. O stands for outstanding. Yes. In America, that's like Olympic athletes. Nobel Lord. I mean, I'm up there, but like, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? I was like, you know, I went for, I had a lawyer when I was getting my green card and I went for the O3 and basically she said I wasn't famous enough to get the O3. But, yeah. ex uh, right? That's what, yeah. exactly. So no, there was no O3. There was years of grinding. I had to go to more school because, you know, America sets up a system that works for How many for degrees me. do you have? I have two. I went to law school then, obviously. I uh, couldn't get into med school. Sorry. <laughs> I tried. That's shame to all of India. You couldn't. <laughs> I tried, tried, bro. I was like, I, where is the science gene? Why am I not catching it? You know what? I really enjoyed that you do the joke about uh, having nine dollars in the pocket. Yeah. Because I think it's. Is it honest? Yeah. I like that it's real because I think Americans generally have this idea that immigrants or just one group of people yeah. that all struggle to get here. Yeah. So it's nice for them to hear that you actually have 10,000 in the bank. Yeah, yeah. Because to come here, you still have to be a very lucky type of Indian. Right. Oh, you know what they say here? Oh, all the Indians are doctors and whatever. It's like, it's like anyone who isn't can't make it here. Yeah. You know what I right. mean? It's a right. self-selection. There's a billion people. Not yeah. all of them are doctors. The ones yeah. who can't read are hang out with my mother. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it had to come back to the mother-in-law. Oh, shit. <laughs> They're her best friend. <laughs> 
but it's a self selection it's true you need a minimum something to even step foot here no yeah, doubt yeah you do yeah, yeah. I, I i'm a very lucky haitian most haitians don't get to come to america so it's no i mean no you know i just don't know what think, caste I, are you from that's something i was really interested in what caste is, is that a taboo subject no no i mean like no because i'm from the higher one <laughs> right <laughs> That was my assumption. I just didn't want to say it, so I wanted to ask. Not at all. Feel free to ask. <laughs> KJ. That's why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Those, the, so there's four of them. There's four of them. I'm on number three. Wow. <laughs> But still above number four. Number three from? <laughs> from the top. So still above okay. the... I'm not the very bottom. That's the untouchable. Exactly. So I'm okay. not quite there, though my mother-in-law has other ideas. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of yours? It, your... It's the merchant class. The merchant class. So, so we are the priests, the warriors, the mer like. Could you Im imagine the Indian warriors? <laughs> yeah, a five four, five foot four warrior. <laughs> like that caste is the slimmest caste in the history of all castes. There's like ten people basically. <laughs> If the people who are in it, they're like, we're happy to downgrade. This is too stressful. <laughs> <laughs> We can't face off with anybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. India's got an interesting culture. Yeah. yeah. My girlfriend is Indian, so she I is. Yeah. Oh my God! Wait, she's gonna make you take the CPA exam at least. <laughs> and, and then, no, she met me as a comedian, so she fucked up. Her parents. No, no, parents she don't. she is playing the long game. Yeah, yeah. That's she's what, banking on me being rich and famous. No, sh and she's like, and on the side, he'll take the MCAT at night. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, my Asians? Am I right? right? <laughs> what, what are you gonna do if your kid, if my kid came home and said I'm dating a comic? I'd be like, okay, this is going to take longer than I thought, but okay. Yeah. You know, we'll plant some seeds for the next few years. Be like, CPA exam, dental, de dentist, something. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's going to be like, you don't work till the evening. What are you doing all day? Go to school. <laughs> be just an hour ago today. <laughs> It's a good life that we have, isn't it? Right. <laughs> But when the girl's mother is watching, she's like, "Well, that's eight hours. He could be in med school." Yeah. <laughs> Luckily for me, she's not a very traditional Indian. She understands that people want to do other things with their lives. They all are before they get Her married. Her parents don't like that she's not married. They don't. She's about my age. They so don't like it. They don't. They hate it. Of they, course, they don't like yeah. it. So why? What, what's the hold up? <laughs> You can't get married on a comedy seller salary. <laughs> okay, what does she do? Oh, she makes money. She's rich. That's why I'm with her. <laughs> yeah. Stem. When you she have does... dreams as a man, you find a woman who has money. <laughs> yeah. That's just how it goes. <laughs> she works in health insurance. Uh, she's never gone out of business. <laughs> That's one business will always have money. True. And it's funny you said if you have dreams as a man, because I I met my husband online. Twenty-five twenty-five years ago. Which site? So okay, exactly. There were no apps. It was a website. It was lonelymathmajors.com. <laughs> Hold on, you made that up. No, I didn't not... make it up. <laughs> That's for a joke. <laughs> okay, I'm like, there's no website for lonelymathmajors.com. Well, but it's a good idea if you think about it. <laughs> But I remember the ads even 25 years ago, like you know, oh, what's your hobby? What's your passion? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> If he has a job, there should be no passions. Yeah. Go to work. That's the Life passion. Life is about suffering for your job until <laughs> you die. <Yeah. laughs> so you met him on a website. Yeah. And how did the courting? Well, process? I trapped him. You trapped him. Yeah, of course. What yeah. else you think? I thought you charmed him. You know? No, no one is charming anybody. That died 30 years ago. <laughs> oh no, it was like what you're doing, what I'm doing. Okay, fine, let us. So he's an Indian man. Yeah. And how long into your dating did you get married? A few months. Wow. God, that felt like a lot from the world that I came in. So it's basically a non-arranged arrangement. Arrangement, right? Yeah. And he was like. I said, look, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to date. Like I was in America, so scared of the word dating. 
because like here then the date never like right ladies you know right sometimes you're like on that cycle you just can't get off it there's no marriage happening is that is that that's an interesting thing because in i'm speaking haitian creole and french we don't really have a word for dating yes. the concept in america in haiti what you do like my first girlfriend i i met her and then i was courting her for like nine months. That's basically me writing letters, and talking to her on the phone, <laughs> doing all that shit. Yes. Before she finally agrees to be my girlfriend, and yes. that's when we finally, you know, get to cheat on her. That's usually how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. He's kidding. He cheated on her before. <laughs> So then we did all that, but here I come here, and then they have this thing called dating, where you could date three or four people, and you take your time to find out which one is going to be the ultimate one. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say much about this because I'm married now, right. and you think dating is mad is bad? Try being married in New York. It is like the ultimate liquid market, right? What do, what do you mean by that? There's a people just. Every banker I know, oh, if it's across the park, it doesn't count. <laughs> if it is downtown, it doesn't count. If you live uptown, it doesn't. There's so many rules for even the married people doing their own things. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. That's a New York thing, though. I don't yeah, think I guess so. so. There's a lot of, like, you know, type A people here doing whatever they want. <laughs> Am I lying? I, where's the lie? What's the thing? You know, right? There is no lie. I, I, where, where's the I'm lie? I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. So you've been with him for 23 years. Yeah, 24 yeah. now. Yeah. Obviously, you I wrote the a joke little, a year ago. You talk, you talk a little bit of shit in your act, but it seems like you're very happily married. Mm. I mean, like, happy is a whole, you know. You know what I mean? Like. Right. It, like if somebody really cool came along, like come down. <laughs> are, are you hitting on me, Zarna? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> the only holdup is that you're dating an Indian sister. So I'm like, oh, oh. if you were dating a brown girl, a, a blonde girl, I would be like, yeah, she's out. <laughs> All right, who, 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 who's your dream man? Who, if you came along, you would leave your husband? Oh my God, you want to hear the truth? Honestly, yes. I've been married 24 years, I have three kids. I would pay money to stay away from me. I so like to be left alone now. I like, here is all my money, please don't enter my space. <laughs> Living in New York with all this overstimulated life that we've had, I'm like, no, please. And my husband too, you know, sometimes we go, like we go on the, we both do road shows, like we go to small town. Some of these towns are like scary where we end up, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like the club is in some sketchy place and you show up with your jokes and you pray that like no one comes up and slaps you. <laughs> it's a thing, right? And I'll tell my husband, I was like, I, you know, I'm a little scared. He's like, oh God, can I pay somebody to kidnap you? <laughs> when you've been married as long as we've been married, we dream of being left alone. <laughs> yeah. In that a New York right. apartment, yeah. after these two and a half years of pandemic, we were like, please, God. So you, you, you met him on the website in Ohio or here? We met at JFK. Really? Yeah. How did, well, yeah, you met online. How yeah, yeah, so we physically met at JFK. Oh, you've been communicating. We were, yeah. I was in Cleveland airport. finishing law school. He was in Europe working, and then we met at JFK. I was moving here for my... First law job. How was that? Were you happy when you met him, or were you, did you feel catfish? No, I. What is catfish? Oh, that's when you basically dating somebody online. You've never seen them, and then you finally see them, and they're the complete opposite of what they presented themselves as. That's like every arranged marriage in India. <laughs> <laughs> There's a name for this. Catfish. That's the Where actual. People lie name? to you and use different pictures to make themselves. Oh my god, there. like this has been going on for hundreds of years. <laughs> <laughs> they just gave it a name. <laughs> no, no, I was fine. You know, it was all good. Like, we, we, there was, you know, back then there was no pictures on the internet and all right. that. So you kind of just imagined. <laughs> so you were happy with how it looked and how it presented himself? Yeah, it was fine. And the, but he, then he's like, let's be friends. I said, oh, where? Oh. He said, let's be friends. He tried to friends on No, you? because he wasn't sure. We weren't sure. He was younger than me. I was 22. 
he wasn't looking to get married. You know how he responded to my ad? I put an ad out. I put an ad out to meet somebody. What did your ad say? My ad was batshit crazy because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I had only seen the arranged world back home. Yeah. So I was like, bring your tax returns. <laughs> What job you have? How is your mother? I didn't know what to ask. Jesus, somebody should go on hinge and be like, what are your tax returns like? <laughs> That's what they look for in an arranged setting. So I was like, this makes sense. Yeah. So he emailed, he's like, this can't be real. I said, it is real. What? Why not real? This is the stuff you need if you're going to marry somebody. And he's, that's true. No, right? Yeah. And he's like, this can't be real. I said, I will show you 100 responses from guys. <laughs> so real. But you know what I didn't know in 1997? I was the only woman, Indian woman, speaking for myself on that website. Because most women had like my sister, my, like their parents, their uncles, aunts were speaking. Mm -hmm. I was the only woman. So I got a ton of responses just because the guys didn't want to go through another person. I see. Okay, what made him stand out from the other guys? What did you like about him? What tickles your heart? He, he was honest. He was he, honest. He's like, you're totally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, can, I can handle a crazy yeah. woman. He's like, this, is, this is wild shit. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> So romance Wait, starts with crazy. This is how advanced I was in 1997. I'm like, I need you to take like a health test to make sure you're healthy before you can come near me. Wow. <laughs> Pre-COVID. Think yeah, about that. Yeah. That is batch crazy. Because in yeah. India, the arranged matches, they would have done that. Wow. They would have made sure that the guy is... Is there, is there a dowry that you got to pay when they do arranged marriages? Yeah, of course they do. Yeah, and he asked also. He and also has uh, no less. The, the, the man's family has to pay the woman's family? Exactly. Is there a, like a range of... No, not the man's family. Man? So the other way. Sorry. The, thank you for that. The woman has to pay the man. Oh, Indian yes. correction over no, here. No, I, I, lost, I lost track. The woman has to pay the man. Woman's dad has to pay the man's dad. To take the girl. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. And how do you decide how much money? The it's the valuation worth? of the guy. They're my bankers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you think you guys are valuing companies. You go to India, it, they're valuing every guy. Is it supply and demand? Like how many guys are after this? No, girl? it's also she's the valuation popular. of the girl, right? If she's got glasses, then he can be a little bit bald. It's fine. <laughs> Sounds about right. That's know? a fair yeah. trade. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but librarian, you gotta be an accountant. That's how it goes. Bold and glasses. And people think like here in America, like race is such a big like skin color is so loaded, right? In America. Like in India, we have a skin color chart. Yeah. <laughs> to see how da dark or light, like I'm a winter wheat. <laughs> as long as I stay indoors. If I go out, I'm a tiramisu. Yeah, it's, it's pretty rough in India. It's like a, the, one of the most... The skin bleaching industry is like $15 billion strong. Oh my God. You want to yeah. hear like TMI? Yes, hey, you guys want to hear TMI? Yes. So the night before the marriage, the, the girls, they get, you know, they're, they're all so young and, you know, at least pretending to be virginal. Let's just say. <laughs> At least pretend. I mean, who knows, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. But one, but one of the things they all do, all the girls, is they get bleached from head to toe. I mean, when I say, like, every crevice you can imagine, like... Including the butthole. It, oh, especially. <laughs> and you know, it's like, literally, it's like somebody set you, you on fire. It is so painful. They did it to me. I was like, wait, what? And this was my mother, and I was like, I bought you a spa day. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but I look good the next day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I watched uh, Indian matchmaking. Yeah. And whenever people were trying to look for a match, they would tell the matchmaker, they'd be like, I need somebody who's smart and educated and also fair. Fair. And no one would say anything. Everybody was just like, yeah, yeah. I guess everybody needs somebody who's fair. Yeah. If I was in India, I would be a piece of shit. Nobody would want to date me. 
but luckily. I'm no, but you're t- how tall are you? I'm six. That, that wow. see that helps. That what? Okay, oh, does high Trump skin color? In there, India? It balances things out. Really? Yeah, like my situation, no height, no fairness. We're done. <laughs> so the worst type of man you can be in India is a dark skin, short man. Well, if, I, if he's a doctor, then it's fine. Because then he's standing on his wallet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wild. You remember that Meghan Markle scandal that broke in America? That whole with Oprah, they started crying and then... Yeah, and yeah. Then Somebody <laughs> yeah. in the royal family asked how dark the baby is. Somebody, you know, the queen. Yeah. That shady ass thug she is. <laughs> what right? color is Woo! the baby going to be? You remember that? Yeah, of course. Like literally the whole country of India is like, so what is wrong with that? Right. Like, every Indian mother-in-law has asked that question. Because black people in America ask that question. Right? It's like, Colorism is deeply embedded in people's lives. It's, it's, you know. It's sad, but it is a fact of life. That's just what it is. It, I mean, at least it's it's dealt with that way back home. I think in Asia, I think in other countries too, right? In oh, Asia? it's in a lot of countries. Yeah. It's like when I was a kid, I had this little cousin. And I remember that moment very clearly because that was like my first time understanding colorism. Remember Akon? The, he yeah. was a musician. Yeah. He was a rapper. You guys remember Akon? Yeah. He, did he was Hindi big song. at the time. He did, did one very famous Hindi song also. So I really yeah. know him. He was this dark-skinned guy. You know, he was big at the time, and I remember we were watching a, a video of him, and my little cousin comes, and she goes, Akon is, is rich and famous. Why is it still so dark? <laughs> yeah. In her mind, that yeah. if you're rich, you should be lighter, because lighter. that's just how the world works. Yeah. So I guess she should have been in India, and everything would have been... It's fucking crazy. Yes, I think it's, in fact, the other way around. It's a little more protected here, here people get outraged. Like it's, people start talk talk about this stuff even in it's Europe. It's fake outrage. People fake, know they're yeah. just not honest about how fucked up they are. They like to pretend it's different, <laughs> yeah. but they know. Right. Have you? I actually thought about where this comes from. I don't really have an answer for it. Have you thought about where it comes from? No, like no idea. The preference for a certain shade of color. Not really. I mean, because yeah. I wasn't dark enough to be attacked ever. You know, I would have. Yeah. I would have. I'm sure there are people in India like researching all this now. But What I, shade is your husband? Okay, this is another thing. Clearly much darker than me. Okay. But if you ask his mother, she thinks he's a descendant of the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> Every photo, I swear to God, she learned how to filter his face. <laughs> He's already married. Why is she trying to sell no, him as lighter? Like, he's no, already out of the street. Oh, gosh. She thinks one day we will separate and then grow. That, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 what do you think? All those wounds brought me up here. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing is, without her, what would I be saying also? Right? I can't complain. That's without true. her, I would That's sit true. here. What would I, We would talk. I'd be like, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> A happy comedian is not a funny comedian. I do have self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your kids. You have three. Three, yeah. Which one is your favorite? Of course, the boy, the oldest boy. He's so cute. I'll show you photos. <clears throat> Green eyes and everything. Five, eight, and one quarter. <laughs> so you have a boy. He's how old? The so two boys. Boy. He's 16 and my younger one is 10. Okay. And then I'm my 19-year-old daughter, but whatever. <laughs> She's your least favorite one. She's okay. She's not bad. She got into Stanford. Yeah, she have whatever. Stanford. <laughs> $80,000 later, you don't even care what the college is anymore. You're like, Shit, I'm going to do meditation on the side. No, you do robotics on the side. That's why you're going there. I'm paying for no meditation. Are you freaking kidding me? It's kind of wild that your people invented something and now she's paying money for it, you know? She's pe- Do you know in New York, anybody here taking a meditation class? Yeah, mindful. If you did, somebody just, re- right? I practice mindfulness, but I do it for free. No, but you, do you ask that lady, it's $50, no joke, to sit on a cushion <laughs> and fake, a, a, and look at a fake wall of grass. <laughs> I think there's something about the American mind where they feel like if they pay for something, it's, it's worth, better. Yeah. Yeah. 
but it's complete bullshit. I just wish I had had that idea. <laughs> I would have had a meditation studio. It's a studio. good scam. Yeah. It really is. So, which part of this, because, you know, you had your whole life and then you get into this thing where you're in a nightclub with people being filthy. Sometimes, like the other night I was right before you on a show and I did a joke about dick sucking. Yeah. And then I felt bad because you had to go out. I'm like, oh man, I don't want to be talking about dick sucking. Zarna's going to go oh, on. You know? Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So you don't mind the dirty grittiness of I'm the I'm so happy to be here. I was like willing to take any job. Honestly, I tell you something, two years of the pandemic and 16 years of being a stay-at-home mom, I learned something about hanging out with my kids. I'm not that into them. <laughs> <laughs> so is comedy your first job? Well, I practice law. I was okay. a litigation attorney. <laughs> so you, you would go to an office and work? Yeah. Okay, so you want to stay at home. No, but I had to quit because why? All these kids, then you have to work now to raise them. Right. Who's yeah, going to do it? Gotta get. Who's going to do it? Yeah. And not 20 years ago, equal, whatever. Nobody's <laughs> equal. It's not equal now. Which, which is your favorite part of this, this life? Now you get to go on the road. You go into these clubs, you stay in hotels. I love... Five shows a weekend. Yeah, I do. I, yeah. do, I do a lot more than five. Okay, like that. Okay, I do get paid. <laughs> I, I was in this. I'm saying that's the right number. You do yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I love that Indian people, Asian people come up to me all the time and they tell me that I'm telling their stories. Yeah. I, you know, it's like no other, it's like there's literally is not another Indian mom comic in the whole world. <laughs> that is rewarding. That is nice. And when I trash my mother-in-law, I, I, I feel like every Indian daughter-in-law is having a cathartic release. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they tell me, they're like, they're that. so I... Why are mother-in-law so, like, sacred in India? You can't talk shit about them? Is that what it is? Yeah, and because the men are attached, right? I mean, are you attached to your mom? <laughs> oh, Indian men basically like Jewish men? Yeah. Jews and their moms have this weird thing. It's annoying. No, I think Indian... I mean, listen, everybody does. Come on, all the men. Not a, no, not really. No? No, no not, not in the Haitian community? We, it, we do, not to the extent of Indians and Jews. Well, also, the parents control their kids a little bit with money. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. It's like, you know, you, my son, I'd give him whatever he wants. Of course, I will control him forever. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. He's not going to do okay in the world by himself when it's time to leave. Yeah, but I control him. <laughs> He's gonna be. Are you gonna like, pick out a girlfriend? I for him? want to date Jennifer. I go not if you want your cell phone bill to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the. So wait, the, where's your family, TJ? It's it's in Haiti. Your parents my, are in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And do they there. care that you're dating an Indian woman, or do they know? They they know, but it doesn't matter to them. My no? mom wanted me to date a Haitian girl. But I've dated Haitian women. My first, all, most of my girlfriends were Haitians. It just so happened that now I have an Indian girlfriend. Uh, and yeah. she's fine. Fine as in your my, your mother is fine with it. She's not that involved in my life. My mother uh, hates me because I do this. Oh, all yeah. right. I understand yeah. that. So she's, you know. No, I, I, I get right. As a mom, I get, I get that. Yeah, my mother is kind of an asshole. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a good parent right there. <laughs> no, she's not. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, here the parents so sweet. Everything like, oh no, you go be happy. No. You need a balance. You need a balance. No, and no. And she's balance. on the extreme oh. of. Really? Yeah, she didn't speak to me for three months when she found out this is what I was doing. Oh, wow. And she legit told me that if she dies, it's because of me. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought yeah. Indian moms were dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's, she's a special one, that one. Yeah. Wow. She was like, if I die, it's because of you. Don't even bother coming to my funeral. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think that's how funerals work, mom. Yeah. <laughs> The dead person is not in charge of the guest list. That's not how it goes. <laughs> I'll do the eulogy if I want to. Yeah. You can tell people it was her dream. For, for you. <laughs> but but on, some, on some level, I get where she's coming from a little yeah. bit. Because you think? We immigrants get paid. want safety for their children. We get paid and drinks, people. 
<laughs> yeah, you get? Yeah. Yeah, they just, you know, they want safety for their children. Yes. Safety is the, the, you know, the best path to make a good life, which is, you know, being a doctor is safe. You'll make money taking advantage of people. That's really what <laughs> doctors do. To or you an engineer or you a lawyer. You do the stuff that's guaranteed that you'll be okay. Right. In my culture, like chasing a dream is not really a thing. No, that that, no people. That is, no, well, first of all, there is no dream. What is there to chase? You know, there are dreams. No. There's mu musicians, are, like, it's the main thing in Haiti. So, this oh. particularly Wait, is a so weird this dream is for lower her. than music? Of course, it's lower than music. Comedy is lower than music? <laughs> Comedy is the lowest of show business. <laughs> You should know that by now. No. <laughs> I'm walking around feeling like Aristotle. That isn't true. <laughs> yeah, we're philosophers for chicken wings and beer. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an art form. It's my favorite art form. But I also know that, you know, it's still not regarded as the greatest thing ever. Oh. It's, it's great for me. I love it. Yeah. But I know it's not. I know, I know. My kids would How'd know. You pick, well, obviously, you picked this because your children told you you were fun. Yeah, I mean, it's like, listen, the first open mic I did, I never looked back. I was like, well, this, if I can get paid doing this, I'm in. Yeah. I got so much. How long did it take you to feel like you were good? Do you feel like, oh, I got something. Oh, I never feel I'm good. Who yeah. feels that? Well, oh, we can name some people. Never mind. Yeah, there are people who do. There's some there egomaniacs in this club right here that are like, oh, you know who but I am. I'm like, not no. necessarily good, but to feel like comfortable. Like I'm getting consistent results. Like that was a good set. And I'm going to go and I feel like when I get on stage, I can have a good set and people are going to laugh. I felt that early on, but I also know that women in general never feel good enough. So as a female entrepreneur now speaking seriously, I'm the voice against women and imposter syndrome. Right. We, as, as a group, never feel like we're good enough. We take less risk overall. So very early on, I'm like, I have seen, I have seen some really shady acts on this stage right here. Mm -hmm. I was like, if he's doing it, guess what? I'm good enough. And now no, look what. Don't worry about it. You know what? That was my mother-in-law. <laughs> That's it. She's controlling this shit. <laughs> She's like, shut her up. Hold on. Let's do a quick survey. Uh, clap here if you're a woman who's felt at some point in your professional life some type of imposter syndrome. Okay. That's about, I would say, 50%. 50? Really? Are they? Okay. Let's go the other. If you imposter syndrome and you're a woman, clap. <laughs> One. <laughs> And I guess the others, they just don't pick a side. No, I don't they, know. Like were, she were was fewer. clapping so silently, this poor lady right here. <laughs> no, it's a thing, right? As women, it's a, it's a thing. So you have to learn to be like, you have to keep saying to yourself, I'm fucking amazing. You just have to. It is I, the I think, time it's a, I think it's actually a human thing, more so than a gender thing. I've done a lot of men that I know who feel imposter syndrome. For sure. I don't deny that some men... Mm. But usually, the ones who should have imposter syndrome don't have it. <laughs> right? Am I right? The ones who need it a little bit, they're like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm awesome. I'm like, no, you're not. Actually, yeah. you're not really. <laughs> you know? Just walking around with big dick energy. Yeah. When you have a tiny dick, you know? <laughs> Can't be lying to people. So now I'm, I'm a voice against that. I really, early on, I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to have faith. Like, the audience won't show up. If, if, they, if I'm no good, there will be no audience. But guess right. who has about 20 sold out shows under her belt right now? Fuck yeah. 1,500 tickets in New Jersey alone two weekends ago. Yeah. So, Look at that. Work. So you know what? That's all I think. I think I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's but wait, working. But it's work. You got to keep pushing. There were last year, nothing. No ticket. Nothing. It was so hard. But you have to keep pushing through that belief. You really Yeah. Have. Yeah. You, you have to. What, what did you find that started working for you? Is it something in your act or just, just using social media more? Both. Just putting out more content? Just, yeah. Yeah. Putting out more content and, and like actually engaging with my social media followers 
as if they're my friends. Yeah. So I don't overthink it. If somebody asks a question, I answer every. I reply to thousands of comments a week. Jesus. Yeah, but that's what it takes. If you guys are ever wondering influencer content creator life. The ones who are really doing it are literally like until their fingers fall off responding to comments. <laughs> do you ever get any haters? I can imagine yeah. you do because you seem very like, what would people hate about you? What would, oh, what would the comments be? Old school Indians, she thinks she, it, in this room right here, a uh, few months ago, there was a whole Indian group of men on this mm -hmm. side from India who started cursing at me in Hindi. While you were on stage? While I was on stage, security had to come. They couldn't even understand, but... Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Security couldn't even understand what was happening until I paused and I told them, I said, I swear to God, like, if I start cursing back at you, you're not going to know where to go. Is it... Because what, I speak three languages in Hindi. You know, I mean, what did they hate? Like, just the idea of you... They were like, oh, you jokes? think you're American? Who put you on stage? Why are you talking? You know, like that kind mm. of stuff. And then, like, oh, every, like, bad word you can... You think cunt is bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love cunt. I just <laughs> like that you said. Yeah, it's one of my favorite words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, they, so, to our culture, to the Asian culture in general, and I speak, I think, even for the Far East, it, a woman standing on stage with a mic and trashing her mother-in-law, trashing her husband, trashing men in general, it's like, it's not... Not as easily accepted. The yeah. men can do yeah, it. Yeah, that's fair. The men have been doing it for the to the women for decades. Yeah, just very traditional. It's very in their traditional. Ways. Yeah. yeah. So. so, do you sometimes feel some sort of conflict? Because you basically lived. Well, I don't know if it's three lives, but you you lived yeah. in India until you were sixteen, and you came here from. Yeah. And then now you live here as a comedian. Which, yeah. Do you feel like you have to choose between being Indian, being American, or being Indian American? Which no, one does I mean, like? somehow this comedy space has allowed me to be 100% me. Yeah, that's the beauty. And of that's it, the know? only thing that sells anyway. You can't yeah. be something that you're not. Like, you guys are so smart, it's like stressful. <laughs> <laughs> if you wrote a joke that's not authentic, it will die a death so fast. <laughs> Yeah, this is a primal kind of It's a very thing. The it's audience a, can tell. If it's a are. very real relationship. So somehow this stage has this is my destiny to be a loud mouth Indian American woman. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever told a dirty joke? No, I would I never had sex. How will do that? <laughs> I don't even know what yeah, that is. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, my bad for asking, you know. Your three children are from an immaculate conception. Anyway, no, they're Hindu folks. kids come floating down the river. That's right, yeah. Why do you think I live on an island? <laughs> Actually, why don't you tell me a dirty joke? No, no, no stop that. It's where I draw the line. Why? No, I never You don't want that to be out there? No, I don't know a single dirty joke. <laughs> you don't know any? I can give you one. No, what? <laughs> I'll give you one to tell. Would you tell a dirty joke? Okay, thing? fine. I will okay, do. Oh right. my God. <laughs> God. PJ is going for it. He's like, I'm getting this on tape. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I need Zarna to tell a dirty joke. Okay. okay if you I'll tell one too, so it feels fair. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Mm. If you guys don't want to hear it, feel free to speak up. Say, don't do it, Andy. Okay. Do you want to tell that one? Oh, this, yeah, okay, all right. Two, should I say it? Yeah, yeah. Two deer walk out of a gay bar. One says to the other, I can't believe I blew 50 bucks in there. <laughs> Yes, you were talking about blowing deers. Yes. <laughs> no, I'll it. tell you one. One of okay. my favorite dirty jokes is uh, what's the difference between a priest and a pimple? A priest, well, no, no, hold on. I fucked up the joke. That's a street joke. What's the difference between a priest and a pimple? A pimple, wait until you're at least 12 years old to come on your face. <laughs>
<laughs> I came into this room feeling like a, a disciple of Aristotle. <laughs> No, we're just dirty <laughs> comedians telling jokes. There's no Aristotle here. We're not saving the world. This is awesome. This was great, yeah. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, I, I should let you go soon. You guys had a good time? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to close out with one joke? No, you don't have to. You guys uh, want to hear one more joke? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so my mother-in-law actually lives in India, right? But she comes here for three months at a time. It's like she has her own season. Winter is coming. <laughs> and when she's coming, she'll ask me, what can I bring for you? And I'll tell her, pack a gun. <laughs> bring some cocaine. <laughs> Throw a live chicken in the overhead compartment. <laughs> I give her such excellent ideas and yet she breezes past security. <laughs> and when she's entering the country, you know, she gets nervous about that immigration paper we all have to fill. She doesn't yeah. speak English, right? So I told her, I said, don't worry about the paper. Just check yes on everything. <laughs> Are you a communist? Yes. <laughs> Are you a terrorist? Yes. <laughs> Have you handled livestock or have chicken right now? <laughs> Do you think she's on a criminal watch list? No. She gets a wheelchair and a priority pass. <laughs> the agent at the gate says, thank you for coming. Welcome to America. I no welcome to America. <laughs> Where are the go back to your country people when I need them? <laughs> Final question. It's a tradition of the show. Final question sure. before we end this. Uh, what would Zarna God like her tombstone to say? She represented her people well. Zarna God, she represented her people well, everybody. Thank you for hanging out. Do you want to give your handles, social media, so we'll let people yes, so we'll have these people follow you? and follow On you. every major platform, including OnlyFans, <laughs> at Zarna Garg, Z A R N A G A R G. I'm yelling at my kids all day long about something, about their scores, about their school, who they're dating. Please feel free to follow and join the journey. All right, follow Zarna Garg. And you can find me at TJ Stand Up so you can get more information about this show. If you enjoyed it, please come back. We do it every other week and I have a new guest every time. So thank you for joining us.